Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be starting in just a moment. Uh, we do apologize that there was a little bit of a confusion with the start date on Zoom, but I'm so glad that uh, you've seen our reminder emails and you've joined this seminar. <laughs> Zoom accidentally said that the seminar is actually at 11 p.m. Eastern time, and of course it's not. It's 11 a.m. right now. We are about to start. Uh, and uh, let me actually start my video. Hi, my name is Sergey, and I'm a senior instructor here with Admit Master. I am joined today by my very good friend, Teresa Perez from the Smith School of Business. We are doing this seminar together. So really the idea behind this seminar is to give you a really good sense of what it's going to be like to get into a top business schools. We are going to talk about the strategies for getting a really good GMAT score, and we're also going to talk about the application process. So perhaps just to put things in the perspective, I'd like to introduce Teresa to you, who is going to share, and I'm actually going to unshare my screen so that Teresa can do that, so that Teresa could, could share with you what the business schools are really looking for and how the GMAT actually fits into this journey. It's gonna be a very quick, talk probably about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll talk about how to actually get a GMAT score. But I really would love for you to actually see how it fits into the overall process so that then we can perhaps have a better perspective of uh, what we may or may not need to do. So please help me welcome Teresa. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sergey. It's a pleasure to be here this morning for, for me, um, this afternoon, this evening for you, wherever you are in the world. So I'm here representing the full-time MBA program at the Smith School of Business, which is located in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, we are um, at Queen's University um, in Kingston. However, we do have a facility in Toronto, <clears throat> wherein if you are looking to pursue any of our master's programs outside of the full-time residential MBA, you might want to consider. So visit our website for more details of those programs. All right, so as Sergey mentioned, I'm going to walk you through some details about uh, how to get into top a top business school like this in the School of Business. I do want to let you know that I'm happy to take questions. Sergey and I will be um, uh, together at the end to help answer any questions. Any questions that we happen to miss today, we're happy to take offline. So if you do think of something after the fact, don't worry. Um, this session uh, will be recorded. You will get a copy of the recording as well. Uh, you will be able to uh, ask us any questions uh, that you have after the session today. So my name is Teresa Perez. I am the Associate Director of Recruitment and Admissions for the Full-Time MBA program. And it's always a pleasure to, uh, to be able to host these sessions with Sergey. Uh, we have seen such great success uh, with candidates that have completed uh, their GMAT studies, uh, the prep course with Admit Master over the years. And uh, that is uh, one of the reasons why uh, we continue to do these sessions because of the amazing results um, that we see. So for students, prospective candidates, that are keen um, to do a prep course and you're really not sure uh, which uh, path to go, I highly recommend Admit Master um, that you uh, consider just speaking to one of their, um, their trainers uh, and getting more details about what it offers. So Sergey will go through that with you later. And there is no uh, formal partnership here. I must admit that this is just purely because of the amazing results that we have seen year over year. All right, so you want to think about um, the journey as all encompassing. So this is not just, you know, a journey of uh, your quantitative aptitude, although we'll get to that, but it's really a journey about, um, you know, all things uh, to be successful. And so that's really what I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes talking about. One of the one of the things that you can control today um, is writing the GMAT or the GRE. Um, most candidates at this stage in the uh, MBA journey have not yet done so, and so hence why you are here to learn more about uh, how to beat the GMAT. Um, and so this is one thing that you can control at this time. Um, and so I recommend taking uh, time, your due diligence, to really understand what goes into the GMAT and doing a prep course to really guide you as to how to beat the GMAT and, and learn fundamental skills that will really be um, highly important as you pursue your MBA program in future. 
So what it really does and what we look for and why this is part of our admissions processes is because it measures your ability to evaluate information. So you're, you're really synthesizing a large amount of information and in, in, in really a, a short time frame. And so the ability to do that takes time. It's a skill that you must learn. Um, it also measures your quantitative skills, so your math skills. And this is going to be very important because an MBA does have some uh, rigor in, in terms of financial skill sets. So you want to make sure that the um, quantitative skills are at a certain level in which I will ensure your success. And that's why we look at a GMAT, for example, and look at the quant score specifically. Um, although we look at the overall score, we're always looking at, you know, how did you do quantitatively? Where is your aptitude in terms of your verbal versus your quant skills? Because this is going to tell us uh, where your strengths lie and really help us to navigate where your support is going to be required during the MBA program. It also tests the analytical writing skills. As I said, it's a verbal and quant um, test. And so the writing skills are just as important. So if you're someone who's really nervous about, you know, the quant section or math in general, because you that's not your, your, your strengths and you haven't really taken these courses in the past, don't worry. We do teach you everything you need to know. But that's why doing a prep course like the one for GMAT really does help prepare you and start to get you thinking about how to best master these skills. And then lastly, it measures your ability to read and understand written and verbal material. So this is really critical if English is not your first language. Um, this helps to, for us to see your English proficiency. And then it also um, helps us to see how well you'll do in sort of that written area of what's required when you're in an MBA program. So the, all, all things... Um, said, you know, we're looking at everything. We take a very holistic approach to recruiting, but this is why the GMAT is so important and the certain uh, skills that we're actually looking for specifically um, to ensure you have strengths um, and of course weaknesses. And, and this is why we match you in teams with those that have strengths where you might have weaknesses. And as you Go through our curriculum, you'll find that um, we do have both the technical and interpersonal skills sort of woven in. So when I say that we take a very holistic approach to recruiting, uh, we're looking at um, all things that you bring to the table, understanding, of course, that you're also coming back to do an MBA, coming back to school um, to seek additional skills. So this is why we're looking at you in two ways. Um, first and foremost, of course, you're going to get the academics, those three letters, the MBA through the academics, um, but you're also going to be building interpersonal personal skills. So those communication skills are just as critical, just as fundamental as the technical skills that you'll learn in the MBA. In our program specifically, we have a modern methodology. We have a blended methodology, essentially. Uh, there is not one way to, to learn in our program. Uh, we do have case-based learning, of course, but we do uh, feel like that should be augmented with a real world business experience. And so you do have the ability to work with SMEs small to medium sized enterprises during the first six months um, as a team or group project. And then the last six months, you do have the ability to, to, to do a real world business project. Um, and so this uh, isn't um, an internship, uh, but it does give you really great skill sets uh, to be able to understand how business operates in an area that you haven't had previous experience in. Um, and as we see candidates coming into our MBA, majority of them are looking to do something very different when they come out of the MBA. So um, majority of them, 95 and 97% typically year to year are looking to transition career. So either pivot completely um, out of their industry or just transition into a different function within the same industry. Um, typically for an MBA, traditionally, you'll see candidates move into consulting and finance. Um, and uh, I'm, we are seeing a shift more towards like technology and healthcare as the economy is changing, especially due to the pandemic. But the reality is, is that we can place someone in any industry. We have an amazing uh, corporate relations team that goes out and partners with um, many different companies and organizations uh, to help you as a candidate, as a student in the program to make those connections uh, during the time that you're in the MBA. And I love Andrew's quote here because he was um, someone who was in the CFL prior to coming into the MBA. And this really speaks to uh, the reality that uh, it doesn't 
doesn't matter what you were doing prior to the MBA, um, we can make that transition happen with the support and resources that we offer. So he's now working as a consultant at uh, BCG, Boston Consulting Group. So we went from uh, being an athlete to uh, management consulting. So anything is possible. Uh, so the myth of a one-year program not allowing you the ability or the time to really make that transition is absolutely false. Uh, we have the amazing resources of a career coach, as well as that corporate relations team to help uh, make those connections happen for you um, to ensure that you're getting that dream job when you complete the MBA. We do also have the best career outcomes of any MBA program in the country, uh, and you can see this um, is quite consistent. So over the years, we've uh, been 95% over um, three months after graduation. Last year, due to the pandemic, we took took a dip like most schools uh, and we were at 85% three months after graduation, but at six months we were at 95%. And this year uh, we're happy to report and the new reports coming out very soon uh, that we are at 98% three months after graduation. So um, the pandemic has not slowed down our employment statistics or our ability to land for our students to land amazing jobs. Um, you can see here one other area I'd like to highlight is that we have over 140 events year over year for our students to make those ne networks and connections happen. So um, this really is quite a robust program in a one year format. So just some quick facts as I close out. Um, we are a 12-month MBA. We begin in January each year with just one intake. We typically recruit around um, 85 to 90 students year over year. Um, very proud to report a 39% female uh, cohort th this year. Last year, uh, we were at 44%, so we want to continue to see that grow. And at some point, uh, my goal is to see parity. Uh, you are required to have a GMAT or a GRE. In very rare circumstances, do we waive this, re this requirement? Um, and typically, candidates that would um, seek or uh, be rewarded, uh, waiver would be someone who has, for example, a CFA designation or a really strong quants uh, undergraduate degree. As I stated, 85% employment last year, this year we're already at 98% employed three months after graduation, and we have an amazing um, average starting salary package of approximately $120,000 year over year. All inclusive tuition, so your cases, your textbooks, your materials are all included um, in the tuition cost. So please find more details of that on our website. Uh, we don't have any deadlines officially. We do advise that international students apply by September. So if you are an international candidate, that deadline has passed. So you'd be looking at applying for our next intake, uh, which is January 2023. And you can start your application as early as January. There is no uh, fee to apply, so it is free to apply to our program, and we um, provide a preliminary assessment at the early onset. So when you click on apply now, you're in fact doing a preliminary assessment, and you work with an amazing team of application advisors um, to help guide you through the entire application. So once you start an application, you do get contacted within two to three business days, um, and one person uh, will be your point of contact from start to finish, and until you interview. And that person uh, will help prepare a robust uh, and authentic application for you and help you put your best foot forward to be successful in this program. All right, so that closes out my session um, in terms of some tips and guidance on why we ask for a GMAT, why it's important, and ultimately uh, what we provide and what you need to do to be successful as an applicant in the Smith MBA program. So I'll turn it over to Sergey and then come back at the end for any uh, questions that you might have for me. Thank you so much, Teresa. Always, uh, always a pleasure to have you here. If anybody has any questions for Teresa, the best uh, way to do it is there's a Q&A button that you're going to find uh, here in, this, in Zoom. So just please uh, press on that Q&A button and type your question and Teresa will be here until uh, I believe she mentioned she'll be able to stick around until 12, so she'll be able to answer your question in a chat, and then we're also going to hopefully have some time to answer the questions live. So, ladies and gentlemen, just like uh, Teresa said, I actually just wanted to comment something really quickly, is uh, everybody was worried about how the MBA outcomes are going to be affected by the pandemic, but here's something really, really important. Here's what we hear a lot from our clients and from a lot of our partners in the industry, is that not only the applications to business schools are up, but also the employment statistics are up, but 
pretty much any business school because let's think about this realistically. Business schools prepare future leaders. And now with all this craziness that's going on, on around us, what better time for the world to have better leaders? So if you're worried about, well, will I be employed after my MBA? Well, we need good leaders and now is really the time. So I really wanna congratulate you on considering or maybe already committing to this process. I know many of you mentioned that you are far along in the process. Many of you are just starting. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of what the GMAT is going to be like. And we'll talk about how do you actually prepare. I will share with you how our clients prepare. So if you uh, decide to come to us, there's a certain process you're going to follow. I'll share that process with you. So whether you can join us or not, you will at least have an idea of how you can structure your studies. And this is really, really important. This is a very different test compared to almost any test that you've ever done. So your preparation has to be structured differently. And you're going to see this in just a moment. So let's take a look at the real question. Here's the question. I'm gonna give you about 15 seconds to read it. All right, hope this starts to make sense a little. And one interesting thing about the GMAT is it's a multiple choice exam. So there are actually five answer choices. Here are the answer choices. And I would actually like to give you about a minute to try to figure out what is the right answer to this question. And just to make it fun and interactive, I am going to launch a quick poll. So when you think you know what the answer is, just please choose it, hit submit, and then we'll talk about this question in just a minute. I want to give you time to kind of digest it and think about it for a minute. But don't worry, we'll break it down. And I'll show you exactly how to do this question. You have a minute. Wow, I'm just uh, looking at some answers here. And I noticed that of everybody who is here in this class, only about 20% of people actually answer this question. So it seems like a tough question. And uh, let, let me ask you, who could say, you know, I'm a hard worker. You know, I'm a hardworking person. I'm a hardworking professional. and you know, I achieve my goals because I'm hardworking. Well, let me show you what it's like to actually do this question. Let me end the poll right now here. Thanks very much for sharing. Uh, so here's what we can do. Uh, this is a hard question, by the way. So here's how we can do if we're nice, hardworking people, here's what we can do. We can say, okay, so we have this ratio of pigs to chickens and it's 13 to 28. And uh, the ratio is given to us in the reduced form. So what this really means is if you're familiar with the ratios is that we don't really know how many pigs and chickens we have. We might have 13 and 28. We might also have uh, 26 and 56. We could have 130 and 280. As long as the ratio stays the same, then we don't really know what the number is. We are supposed to figure that out. So 
we can technically say we have 13 times n pigs and 28 times n chickens, and then we can add 15 pigs. So now we have a new number of pigs. We also have the, the new ratio. So if we divide the total number of pigs by the total number of chickens, the new ratio is going to be four to seven. We can actually solve for n, and we can figure out that n is equal to five. And then we can calculate the number of pigs, the number of chickens, and we can add them up. And the answer is B, 205. So we can certainly do this. If we're comfortable with algebra, comfortable with ratios, we can do that if we're nice, hardworking people. But let me show you something different. Let's call this the work smart way, also known as the mastery way, which is the way that you could get to if you really learn how to deal with the GMAT, if you learn this game of the GMAT. So here's what we can do. Here's the work smart way. And I'll let you decide whether you prefer to work hard or work smart. We've been told that the ratio is 13 to 28. What this means is that for every 13 pigs, we have 28 chickens. And if we have 13 more pigs, we're going to have 28 more chickens. That's how this works. That's how the ratio works, right? We add 13 pigs, we add 28 more chickens. So here's what this means. This means that the total number of pigs must be divisible by 13. And the total number of chickens must be divisible by 28, right? We have 13 more pigs, 28 more chickens. That's how the ratio works. And what this also means is the total number of pigs and chickens together must be divisible by 13 plus 28, which is 41. The math is here really simple. All we needed to do is understand what the ratio actually is and how it works. Now, let me ask you a question. The question was, what was the original total number of pigs and chickens on this farm? We know that number is a multiple of 41. How many answer choices are divisible by 41? Obviously, these five answer choices are very close to each other, so only one of them is divisible by 41. And it's actually very easy to figure out that the number is 205, because 40 times 5 is 200, 1 times 5 is 205. And we can literally do this in 30 seconds. Now, I'll let you decide whether you prefer to work hard or work smart, but speaking about future leaders, the leaders that really made it to the top of the companies, the top of the corporations. We call them chief executive officers, CEOs, right? And here at Admit Master, we talk a lot about really learning how to think like a CEO. Because a CEO who's sitting in a boardroom wouldn't necessarily pull out a calculator or a piece of paper and start doing algebra. The CEO needs to think differently, think on their feet, do some critical analysis. So. Even though some people might prefer to work hard, if you think about what CEOs do, these are the people that don't necessarily work hard. These are the people that work smart. And that's why they get paid a lot of money. So if you are thinking one day of becoming a CEO, this would be a really good opportunity for you to learn how to work smart. And that actually brings us back to the GMAT. I mean, speaking about the CEO, of course, but this was a question on the GMAT. So, how does it relate to the GMAT? Well, if you're wondering what really separates people from get, who get, let's say 500 scores from people who get 700 scores, which are you know, amazing scores, 500 doesn't really get you anywhere. 700 gets you to almost any business school in the world. Here is a quote from people who make the test, the GMAT. Here's what they say. This is going to be a test unlike almost any other test you've ever done for one simple reason. Almost any other test you've ever done was testing your knowledge. Essentially, it was testing your memory. If you think of, let's say, uh, an exam in history, well, what do you need to know in order to be successful on that test? You need to know some history, right? Well, you're trying to get into a business school. How much of the business do you need to know? And Teresa just alluded to this. You don't need to know anything about business. That's why you're getting into a business school. You could be an athlete, a musician, or you could maybe work in business. You're going to learn everything you need in a management classroom. And then you can go and actually work because you're going to have now the right understanding of the business. But in order for you to be successful in the business school, you need to demonstrate that you have what it takes. You have these higher order reasoning skills. 
And these are the skills that are tested on the GMAT. These critical thinking skills, these decision-making skills, these time management skills. This is really important. Now, many people then wonder, well, okay, what if I don't have these skills? And a lot of people, for example, are afraid to take a practice test on the GMAT because they say, oh my God, what if I fail? What if I realize I'm not skilled at doing this? Well, guess what? When we were born, none of us had any skills, well, almost any skills, right? We couldn't walk, we couldn't talk. We didn't know how to write or how to add two plus two, but eventually we learned this. So like any skill, this could be learned. And of course, for the GMAT, you have to have some basic knowledge. Yeah, so a little bit of knowledge is still required, but it's really basic. If you're really afraid of math on the GMAT, I think I've just demonstrated to you with this question that the math there is not that hard. In fact, there's nothing from university and there's very little from high school. Most of it's from the middle school. And it's mostly just some basic understanding of the numbers of algebra. The questions aren't out there to test how well you know, let's say an area of a trapezoid. They're really out there to demonstrate whether you can think outside the box. And of course, this, by the way, was the quote from the GMAC, people who make the test. Now, Teresa was talking about athletes and really, one of the interesting things about the MBA program, I have my own MBA as well that I've done about 15 years ago. Wow, oh, geez, this was a long time. Uh, but what I've noticed even then that people in my class were from all kinds of different backgrounds. And for some of you maybe who do any sports, you might relate to this. So the GMAT will be much more like learning a sport. It's a mental sport. So the, I could use here an example of uh, swimming. Well, if I want to learn how to swim, would I go out and read a book on swimming? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe a little bit, but it's not gonna get me to actually become a swimmer. I need to jump into a pool. I need to do lots and lots of practice. Most importantly, I need a good coach who's going to show me what to do, how to do it. And really the interesting thing about the job of a coach, and that is why Michael Phelps has a coach or had a coach, and he's the best swimmer the world has ever known. Why would Michael Phelps have a coach? I mean, he's so skilled at this. See, the thing is, the coach does actually two things. Number one, teaches you the techniques and the strategies. But number two, the coach sees what you don't see. Sometimes when you do a question, let's say on a GMAT, and you say, wow, geez, I keep making these mistakes. I don't really know why. Well, a good coach can take a look and say, ah, here's why. You're making this sort of a mistake or you're making these sorts of computational errors. And what's interesting is eventually you learn how to coach yourself. You do a lot of the self-reflection. If you come to our class, we're actually going to teach you not just all the strategies, but also how to structure your studies and most importantly, how to coach yourself because this is gonna be important. You're gonna spend a lot of time with the instructor, but a lot of time and even more time, you're gonna spend with each other, maybe with other people in a class in study groups or just by yourself doing questions. So we have to make sure that you use this time productively. And most of you are going to be spending quite a lot of time. To be honest with you, most of our clients spend you know, anywhere from a hundred hours to maybe 300 hours or more because they're all looking for big improvements to get into top schools. And I'll show you how it's actually structured in a moment. Now, I just want to show you one more thing about the structure of the test. Most people, when they look at the structure, they say, okay, what are the four sections? And I usually hear the four sections, the mass, verbal, and a couple of others, the essay. But here's something important, is this is all really about testing your skills. The three sections are testing reasoning skills, and there's one section that's testing analytical skills, and as well as a little bit of a writing skill. So it's really all about that skill, right? And the interesting thing about the skills, is they take time to develop. I cannot just wake up tomorrow and say, I learned how to play golf by just, you know, watching a YouTube video in my sleep. It doesn't work that way. It's a big commitment. And that's what demonstrates to the school. And Teresa alluded to this is that Perhaps even if your GPA wasn't very high, 
Well, now you can invest some time into doing really well on the GMAT and you can perhaps offset your lower GPA. And here's a really interesting part. For most of us, it took four years to get that undergraduate GPA. It takes three and a half hours to do the GMAT exam. It takes about three months to prepare. For most people, it's about three to, three to four months. So that return on investment of you doing really well on the GMAT is going to pay off a lot. And there are a couple of other reasons why many people decide to do well in the GMAT is that the GMAT doesn't just get you into a good business school. I mean, by itself, of course, the GMAT won't. And Teresa alluded that there are other parts of the application as well. By the way, if you're interested in this, I would really highly recommend that you connect with uh, Teresa and with uh, Teresa's colleagues so they can walk you through everything that you need to apply. This is an amazing service. I really just take my hat off for all the work that uh, Smith Business School does to help you as a candidate. Uh, we also here at Admit Master do a lot of different workshops about the applications. There's actually one that we are doing tomorrow uh, at, uh, during lunchtime. It's all about how to put together your application, your resume, and how to ace the interview. So if you're interested, go on our website, admitmaster.com, and sign up for that workshop. But the GMAT also is used for assessing who gets scholarships. And the GMAT is also used for recruitment purposes. When you're in the MBA program or when you graduated from the MBA program, the companies that come to recruit on campus, they will ask you, what is your GMAT score? And I got some amazing interviews when I did my MBA, amazing interviews from companies that didn't even come on campus because my 750 score was right on top of my resume, right below my name. It was, I just graduated from this school and here's my GMAT score. And I, I've never actually told anybody what my GPA is. It was pretty high, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, your GMAT might even be more important than your GPA from the school. In fact, some business schools in the world don't even let their candidates disclose the GPA because they want everybody to be, you know, kind of equal and fair. If you've gotten into that school, you're good. But the GMAT is still a differentiating factor. Now, if we start digging a little bit deeper into the structure of the test, the quantitative and the verbal reasoning sections are actually the sections that contribute towards your total score, 200 to 800. The other two sections, integrate reasoning and the analytical writing assessment, are scored independently. They're still important. The business schools are still looking at them, but they do not contribute towards the 200 to 800 score. And it takes a lot less time to prepare for these sections. In our class, we spend a lot of time specifically on quantum verbal. Of course, we cover the other sections as well. So if you're curious a little bit more about these sections, and we've just done today quantitative reasoning a question, we'll hopefully have time to do maybe one or two more. But here in the problem, so in the quantitative reasoning section, there are a couple of types of questions. One is what we just done, which is called problem solving. Another one is a very strange question type that is called data sufficiency. This is a question that's very management-like question. You're given a problem, but you don't actually need to solve it. You simply need to figure out if it is possible to solve it. And this is a really strange question type and many people really struggle with it. But there's a system you can follow. And if you do, you will recognize that it's actually a lot easier than problem solving because you don't need to solve a problem, right? You just have to figure out if it's possible. You know, I can come over and say, it's possible to build a house here on this lot. That may take me a day. For me to actually build a house will take a year. <laughs> so that's the difference between data sufficiency and problem solving in a nutshell. Now, verbal reasoning section is a section that uh, for many people is actually harder than math, believe it or not. And it contains three question types, sentence correction, critical reasoning, and reading comprehension. We are going to have separate workshops on these sections. So tomorrow, tomorrow evening, if you haven't signed up for it yet, you can go on our website, admitmaster.com and sign up. There will be a two hour class on the verbal section and on October 28th, which is a couple of weeks from now, there will be a two hour class on quantitative reasoning where we'll cover all of these types of questions. Now, these two sections, quantitative reason and verbal reason, not only they contribute towards the total score, but they also follow what's called the computer adaptive algorithm. 
which is a really strange and a little bit of a scary algorithm. What this means is that when you're doing well, the questions keep getting harder. And if you're not doing well, the questions keep getting easier. So let me ask you a question, just maybe put it in the chat box. Would you like to see a lot of easy questions on a test? Or would you like to see a lot of hard questions on a test? What sort of a test would you like to do? Would you prefer an easy test? Or would you prefer a hard test? Let me know. I'm really curious. Just put it in the chat box, easy or hard. All right, I see a lot of people are saying easy. A couple of people are saying hard. Well, maybe moderate. Okay, hard, hard, easy. Okay, well, here's something interesting. On a traditional normal test, and I remember I did some really difficult tests in my university. I did six years of physics and math. So some of my classes were so hard to understand. They were like particle physics. I don't know if any of you have taken this, uh, all this really, really sophisticated physics. I remember when I was walking into the exam, I was just praying to get an easy question because I knew it would be a hard question. There was no way I'm gonna get a good mark. But here's on the, the interesting thing about the GMAT is that we have multiple questions, 31 on quant, 36 on verbal, and the test adapts, which means that if we're not doing well, the test keeps getting easier. So if we see a lot of easy questions, that means we're not gonna get a good score. If we see a lot of hard questions, that means we will get a good score. Now, of course, we don't always, we're not always capable of recognizing what questions are easy or hard. So please don't worry about seeing an easy question, say, oh my God, I might not, I might not be doing well because this is an easy question. It doesn't really work that way. But what is important to take away from this is that if you want a good score, you're gonna see a lot of hard questions. It's not even like some other tests where you see a bunch of easy, some medium and a few hard. And LSAT, for example, is that way. We teach the LSAT as well. The GMAT adapts, which means you will actually see a lot of hard questions if you want to get a good score. And that means you have to be ready to see a lot of hard questions. Oh, and by the way, you don't get more time for hard questions. So that brings us to a very important question that is how do I actually prepare? What sort of resources can I use? And many of you asked, well, what books should I use? Or what sort of resources should I invest in? I'm gonna share with you a few different options. But first of all, let me maybe share with you just really quickly how I prepared for the test. Maybe that's something you can relate to. So when I decided to do my MBA, I just learned that I need to do the GMI, just like many, maybe many of you who are starting this process. And I said, what's the best way for me to figure out what this test is all about? I went to mba.com and I've noticed that I can download a free practice test. Now, these days, that, that was in early 2000s. These days, there are lots of practice tests available. You can go on our website and uh, you can actually take a practice test uh, and it's going to give you a little bit more than the one from mba.com in terms of analysis. And I'll show you a link at the end of this class. So that's what I did. But at that time, there was only two tests available from mba.com. I took a first practice test and I got 650. And I said, okay, well, that's a pretty good score. It's about the top 20%. And I also got a taste of what's coming on the GMAT. And what I realized is that there were many mass terms that I didn't know. Like I didn't, for example, know what was an isosceles triangle because I've learned math in a different language. So I had to review a little bit of math. It took me about a week. And I said, okay, let me take another practice test. There were only two practice tests available. So I said, okay, I feel pretty good. So I took another, the next practice test on the next weekend and I scored 700. I said, okay, well, it's a, it's a pretty good score. It's a top 10% or was even higher at that time. Let me go and actually book the real test. It wasn't that busy at that time. Remember it was like 17 or 18 years ago. So I booked my test a week later and I got 750, my first and only attempt. And the whole process from start to finish takes me two weeks. Now I'm 
I'm telling this to you not to impress you. Uh, honestly, it impresses me because two weeks ago, I didn't know anything about the GMAT and in two weeks, I just got 750. And this is my official score report. In case you're wondering, I am not a genius. Some people think, oh, sorry, you must be a genius. I am not. In fact, for full disclosure, I've used the strategies on the GMA that took me years to learn. Just when I learned them, I had no idea that this is what I can do on the GMA. When I was in school, I participated in some mass Olympiads. If you're from certain parts of the world, you probably know what this is. Uh, different competitions where you solve different complex problems uh, within a very short period of time. And uh, not only that, but at some point, once I got into teaching the GMAT, which was about 12 years ago, I realized that it also takes me time to learn how to teach others. And I've been doing this now for 12 years. So I could say that uh, I've worked with a lot of clients who's got, an, who's got an amazing result. So I got really good, not just at doing the GMAT, but also at teaching the GMAT. And really to bring everything back, the only reason why I did so well in the GMAT, and perhaps that's something, again, you can relate to, I got incredibly lucky in school. I had amazing teachers. And this was when my, one of my teachers, my math teacher. He taught me how to do all these sorts of tricks and strategies that I've just shown you in the GMAT. That sort of a stuff that I've shown you with pigs and chickens, I was doing this when I was like 10 years old. Right? So it took me a really long time to learn over many years in school. But because of these amazing teachers, I was able to develop these skills. So I wasn't born with them. I'm not a genius in any way. I just had some really good teachers. I remember a few years ago, I had a, a client who was in my class. He actually came to me and said, look, Sergey, I'm hoping that by the time I have my kids school age, you guys at Admit Master can open a school for kids because I've never learned this, but I really wish that my children can learn this because they're going to go so much farther in life. I said, well, look, there's never, it's never too late to learn these skills. So if you've never learned them in a school, then you can learn them now. But we're going to work on opening a school for kids. Don't worry. And uh, we actually are working on this. Just a little bit of a spoiler. Um, hopefully, we're going to have that pretty soon. So I wanted to show you uh, just a quick comment from one of our clients just to show you that you don't really necessarily have to have learned this in school. Again, this never it's never too late. So Daria, she came to us about a year ago and said, look, I need a really good score. I'm going to a school where anything below 700 is not going to work. So I need that good score. How can I do this? And we said, OK, Daria, here's what you need to do. Take a practice test. We're going to build a structure for you. Come to our class. So she came to our class, our course is six weeks long, and then we will give you some things to work on and we'll continue supporting you. We'll do lots of practice after the course is over. So it took her a total of three months, 13 weeks, six weeks in class, seven more weeks to prepare. And she was able to improve her score from 380, which is a terrible score, to 700. She just started her master's at a, her dream school, a master of finance in Europe, and she just couldn't be happier. And the most important thing is notice when she's talking about how she got that score. She doesn't say, I learned a bunch of formulas. She said, I learned how to think, how to think differently, how, approaching these questions, how to manage my time and my stress. This is really important. You can know all the strategies, but if you can't use them, they're useless. So it's really important that you have, you're prepared for this game mentally as well as intellectually. Both are really, really important. Now, ultimately, all of our clients keep talking about things like a CEO because we talk a lot about this in a class. So if you're standing in front of this journey and you think, you know, okay, where would I go? What sort of resource will I use? And I'll show you these resources in a moment. You can think of this as maybe when you were in school or maybe when you were a child, you may remember maybe your parents took you to this corn maze where you don't really see like the corn is really tall and you don't really see where the exit is, but you, you can go either way and you just keep going. And sometimes you take the wrong turn and then you come back and eventually you can make it to the other side. So this is how a lot of people prepare for the GMAT. In fact, because we're creatures of habit, 
most of us, when we need to prepare for a new test, we will go and buy a book, right? That's how this things always work. You know, what's the book that I need? I've asked everybody a question here. Is that I need to know what books to use. I'm actually going to show you what book you need to use. Most people are saying, okay, among all these books that I have, it will take me years to read them. This one is called the official GMAT guide. So it has got to be a really good book. What's interesting about this book, it's actually a question bank. It has a bunch of questions. You can access them online on your mobile or in the physical book. But the explanation to these questions are atrocious. If you try to do what the book suggests in the explanation, you'll never do well on the GMAT. Because these explanations aren't teaching you how to do well on the test. They're simply explaining why this is the right answer. So if you're a PhD student and you're wondering, you know, how is this question working? You can read the explanation and say, ah, here's, here's how they do this. They kind of prove this theorem and, you know, it's really nice, it's really cool. But if you need to do that question in two minutes, the explanation from a book is not gonna help. So this is a really good book for questions that doesn't teach you how to do tests. So a lot of people are gonna say, okay, well, what about these strategy books? You know, there's a lot of different strategy books that, you know, show me these strategies. Yes, that's true. A lot of these strategies you can also find on YouTube. A lot of these strategies you can find in a book. But here's something interesting. If you look at who's publishing the books, they're all made by companies who run GMAT classes. So let's say you go and invest in a book. That book is probably going to be used in a class. What this means is the book was actually written by the GMAT instructors as a guide to the class. So when you come to the class, you're going to learn all the strategies and the book is just a supplement. Well, is it possible to learn without the class, but just by using a supplement? For most people, no. You can pick up a few things, but please do remember that there's a little bit of a conflict of interest there. Because the books, the $20 book is not going to show you the same as the instructor can teach in a class. And it's not just because the test prep companies are evil, but it's really because this is a skills-based exam. So there's only so much that I can write in a book. I can write the best book in the world about how to play golf. It's not going to get me too closer to actually learning how to play golf. I need to go and start playing. So when... We are preparing for the test. And when we're trying to navigate this maze and we're trying to say, okay, let, let me try this resource or let me try you know, to do these questions. Let me try to go on these forums. I, I was talking to one of our clients yesterday and she's doing really well on her practice test, getting very close to her target. And I was telling her, well, um, you know, go on the GMAT club and you can actually find a certain resource. And she's like, what's GMAT club? I said, well, you don't know what GMAT club is? She said, no, I don't need to. <laughs> you know, I kind of get everything that I need here. So there's so many different things, so many different directions you can go to. Uh, we call this trial and error. And trial and error works really well if you're trying to do something that has never done, been done before. If, if we're Thomas Edison trying to build a lamp, if it's never been done before, then we need trial and error. We need to try this 10,000 times. But when it comes to the GMAT, the trial and error usually works against us. And here's the interesting statistics from the same people, mba.com. They say that 7 million people every year buy a GMAT book, or download GMAT preps. Oh no, 7 million people a year explore GMAT preps. So they would go on the uh, websites that are owned by the GMAT, 7 million unique visitors a year, and they're gonna do some research about the business schools. Of them, 2 million people will either buy a book or download the practice test. 2 million people. So they're getting serious. They are investing some time and a little bit of money to actually beginning to prepare for the GMAT. I was talking with another client yesterday who's like, yeah, I have all the books. You know, I had them on the shelf for a while. Sometimes I would open them up and I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. And then they go back on the shelf for another few months. So guess what? Out of 2 million people, only 200,000 will actually do the real test. And of those people, only 24,000 people will get scores of 700 or more. So if we're really looking at statistics, what this means is that if you and I just woke up this morning and said it would be a really good idea to do the MBA program, I'm very excited. I've heard this from other people. 
the chance statistically of getting a 700 plus score is one in 300. That's not a very good chance, right? So how can we improve our chances? Well, one way is to have a really good structure. That's kind of like having a map to the journey. And a lot of really good self-preparation programs will give you that map. Now, some of the books try to do this. The, the one little problem about the books is they don't give you any feedback. They just teach you one way, but you, like, you cannot tell to, to the book, where am, am I making mistakes? So that's why there's a lot of these self-preparation programs online. They're usually fairly affordable. We have these programs as well that actually tell you, okay, here's what you do first. Here's what you do second. These are the exercises you need to do. It's a very practical test. It's learning by doing. It's not about reading a book. It's about doing questions, but doing them well and learning from your mistakes. So learning all these things and following a structured program is gonna help you get there a lot faster. But an even better way to prepare is to actually come with someone. Come with somebody who's been there. Come with a guide. You remember that you walked into this maze and like, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> you know, the maze is big and it's, you know, it's getting dark. How do I get out of here? <laughs> do I scream? But what if you actually walk with somebody and say, I'm going to take you on this journey and it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to show you exactly what to look for and we'll walk through this maze and you're going to have a really good time and you're gonna come out on the other side and you'll really enjoy the process and you're gonna get your result in the fastest possible way. So that's really our objective here at Admit Master if you decide to join us. And I wanted to show you a couple more things. Uh, so here's um, one of our clients, Darini. She actually, she just sent me the video that she filmed in a school where she's going, uh, one of the schools in the UK. And uh, she said, look, when we spoke for the first time, said, I've been trying to study for four years. Nothing works. It's impossible. And I said, Darini, what did you do? She said, oh, I have books. I, would, you know, I was trying to do some questions. And how is it working? It's not working. So what was really important is she came and she said, I need the structure and I need people around me. I cannot do this on my own. I need not just the instructors, but I need other students. I need people I can talk to because I don't maybe necessarily have friends who are going through this experience. I need somebody to just sit down, talk up through these questions. I need some support here at Admit Master. We have office hours every week. We have classes twice a week. So in fact, let me just show you really quickly how this might work. If you decide to join us, uh, there are a couple of formats of classes. There are evening classes and weekend classes. So the next evening class actually starts in a week from now, uh, next Tuesday. And today is the last day to save $100. This is an early bird discount that actually expires today. So if you decide to join, it's $15.99. This is going to be the best investment you ever make because it actually is an all-inclusive price. Now, it gives you everything you need. And uh, statistically, we ask our students, what was the return on investment? And the average scholarship that our students get when they get into a business school is about $15,000. Right, so invest $15.99. You get $15,000 in scholarship. Again, that's statistically, but most importantly, you're going to get your results a lot quicker. And we guarantee it because we're going to be here for you. Uh, you have up to a year. You can keep coming back to classes for free. You have some personal coaching. You're going to be in a study group. We give you all the books, all the resources, everything that you need to prepare. That's everything that's going to be included. So it's a very unique program. If you try to compare the cost of the programs, they're almost the same everywhere. You know, it's $15.99 Canadian. $13.99 US. But if you look at what's included in the amount of hours and just the fun that you're going to have in a class, hopefully you guys are having a little bit of fun. I'm having so much fun teaching you this class. Uh, and most importantly, our goal is we depend a lot on the success of our students. The reputation for us is the most important. That's why we don't even accept everybody in our class. If you want to join our class, you go online, fill out enrollment form, we're going to talk. We need to make sure you're really serious about this because we put our reputation uh, on the line when we, you join our class. We need to make sure you really do well in this test and you obviously are enjoying the process. That's why we're here for you. Now, if you cannot join a live class, there are other options available as well. There are self-prep options that are super affordable. They start from only 49 Canadian dollars a month. If you go on admitmaster.com slash offer, you can see some samples. You could, um, uh, you could enroll in the classes. You can see some free demos as well. And uh, we keep track of the success of our students. The average scores of our students are 670. 
And 35% of our graduates achieve scores of 700 or more. So that's just a huge testament to uh, the rigor of this program. Um, we, again, we, we don't put any pressure on you on how long it's going to take. Here's Fionn. It took her like seven months to get a 760 score because she's a nurse. She works in the emergency room and she's got three other jobs. So we said, okay, yeah, I need a good structure. I'm gonna work on this test and I have time. Uh, Brian, for example, he said, oh, I don't have the time. I have two months, I need to get a 760 because he was applying to a school where that was pretty much the score that he needed, right? So he was very, very committed, very dedicated, spending 35, 40 hours a week and she was a, he was able to get that score. So ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to take the next step. Uh, come and join us, connect with us. In fact, if you'd like for me to check in with you and have a personal discussion, I'm just gonna launch a really quick poll so that uh, you can let me know uh, what you would like to do. And I'd love, uh, I'd love for us to connect, I'd love for us to chat. Again, like I said, our program isn't for everyone. So I want to make sure if you do come and join us, this is gonna be the right choice for you. Any questions? We have about three minutes for questions and I'm happy to stay behind, but I know Teresa has to go in about three minutes. So if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, somebody was asking, I need GMAT verbal coaching. How can you help? Okay, I'm gonna answer this question in a moment. Any questions for Teresa before we have to let her go? I've already been answering some questions. So I want to thank everyone for your questions and I'm happy to put in to uh, the chat my email address. So if you do have yes. any questions um, offline today, happy to get to those as well. But I want to thank uh, Sergey so much for the opportunity. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session and I look forward to connecting with you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Teresa. Uh, How many people are there? It's always, oh, okay, great. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Now, uh, I'm going to put here my contact information as well, and as well as a link where you could see these offers um, for our class, and you can see these free trials. I will be following up with everybody by email as well. So please keep an eye on your email, and I will include a lot of resources and a lot of links as well. Somebody was asking, I need uh, GMAT verbal coaching. How can you help? Well, See, the, the math and the verbal actually test very similar skills. They test your attention to detail, they test your uh, time management, your analytical, your critical thinking skills. They just use different subject matters. They use uh, your understanding of the structures of the English language versus the structure of math. Both are coachable. In fact, if you're really curious about how you can do better on the verbal section, I would very highly encourage you to sign up for our verbal refresher class, that's tomorrow night. If you are in a time zone where 7 p.m. Eastern time is the middle of the night for you, do not worry, sign up anyway. And as long as you signed up, we will send you a recording. But you have to sign up for that class because we only send recordings to people who are signed up and it's a free class. So just again, go to adminmaster.com slash offer and we'll talk about that. Can you share the link to sign up? Uh, yes, so if you go to admitmaster.com slash offer, you, if you go to that page, right on top of the page, you're actually going to see a link to our refresher classes. And the next one, so tomorrow is October 14th. We're actually gonna have a couple of classes tomorrow. There's a class uh, at, this, at this time, actually at 12, 12 noon Eastern time, we're going to have a class about the application process. And it's uh, with one of our admissions consultants, we will talk about how to ace the MBA interview. The MBA interview is such a critical part of the application that many people don't really know how to handle it. And they are either getting really nervous or they don't have good questions or they don't know what questions to, or how to answer the questions from the admissions committee. So we'll talk about that. Uh, tomorrow, you're gonna see the link on the same page at master.com slash offer. And uh, in the evening, we're going to have that verbal refresher class. So please sign up and we'll send you a recording if you can't make it. All right, any other questions? I know Teresa has been answering questions. If you don't have a lot of questions, that just probably means I did a really good job explaining what the GMAT's about, hopefully. So if you don't have any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, again, 
I just want to congratulate you on making the time to come here. It's been a pleasure to spend some time with you. Most importantly, I really want to encourage you to consider seriously what is it that you have to give to this world? Because very often, when we want to really go places in our careers, when we want to get these leadership positions, we need the right credentials. Now, of course, it's possible to get there without the MBA. I remember after the MBA, when I graduated, I got a job with a very large company. And uh, this was uh, the job that uh, helped me pay, pay down my student debt. And it was a really good experience working for this company. I worked for them for about 10 years. And what I've noticed that of everybody in this company, if I look at the people on the director's level, the average age of people without the MBA was about, I would say, 50, 55. But the average age of directors with an MBA was probably around 35. So the MBA just helps get there a lot quicker. And of course, we all want at some point to retire, right? Like maybe when we're 60 or 65. So if we can accelerate our progress, that's really what the MBA is all about. Then you know, like, like we mentioned, the world needs leaders. And if you have an idea of maybe starting a business, or if you have an idea of how you can go and work for a big company and, and make the world a better place, or maybe if you just simply want to make more money and, uh, and just have a really good return on investment, the average return on investment from an MBA program is about three to $8 million, depending on what school you go to. So over the course of your career, over the next 30 to 35 years, with an MBA degree, statistically, you're going to be making about three to eight million dollars more than without the MBA. Now, of course, some people say, well, well, Bill Gates doesn't have an MBA. Well, that's true. And Mark Zuckerberg doesn't have an MBA. But how many Mark Zuckerbergs do we really have? And how many people who work for Facebook or work for Microsoft or work for Google who are in really senior positions how many of them have an MBA? Right, if, uh, if you want to do a little bit of a research and go on LinkedIn and just see what do people do with an MBA? What do people do without the MBA? And kind of make the best decision for yourself. The MBA isn't for everyone. It requires a certain mindset and certain skills. And the purpose of the GMAT is to actually help you develop these skills. We would have clients in almost all of our courses, we would have one or two clients who would come and when they introduce, when we go in, around the table and introduce each other, it would usually be somebody who would say, I'm here to learn new skills and I'm going to a program, maybe I got a waiver or maybe I'm going to an executive MBA program that doesn't require the GMAT. But I know that in order for me to be successful in the school, I need to have the right skills. So I'm here to learn these skills because I don't want to struggle in my MBA program. That's what helps me prepare. That's why the business schools take the GMAT very seriously because not only it helps with recruitment, people with high GMAT scores usually get very highly paid jobs at investment banks, consulting, management consulting firms that helps. But also the business schools need to make sure when you're in a program, you're gonna be able to handle the workload. And the workload in the business schools is very high, right? So we need to know how to work smart, how to prioritize, how to manage our time well, because the MBA is a big commitment of time. If you're doing it full time, it's going to be very, um, a, a very big time commitment where you're fully immersed and you are going to uh, come out a year or two years in two years, you're going to walk out with a lot of amazing skills. Uh, so our live classes, you can go on our website, like I mentioned, the October 19 class is 1599 Canadian, 1399 US. That expires tonight. And that's an all-inclusive price. That means you have unlimited coaching for a year. Uh, that's really an amazing deal. Again, if you try to compare this with what a lot of other companies do is they will say, this is just the price for the course, but if you need extra coaching, you got to pay extra. And it usually gets pretty expensive. Could be two, $300 an hour for extra coaching. But here at Admit Master, it's all included. So that's our live class. November 13, again, today is the last day for the $200 early bird discount. So it's $14.99 Canadian, $12.99 US. 
if you are in the limited budget, then you would also you, you also have an option to learn the same scenes, but without the live instructor. And that's why there's this GMAT Express option. It literally starts from about 50 Canadian dollars a month, it depends on how many months do you want that option for. And uh, tomorrow, the refresher classes, they are free. So we do every week, we do similar seminars to this on different topics. So tomorrow, like I mentioned, we have two seminars. One is at the same time during lunch time, uh, 12 noon Eastern time, that's about the application process. And tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Eastern time, there will be a class on the verbal reasoning section. It's a two hour class, so seven to nine. If you are in the North America or America's time zone, that's gonna work really well for you and you after school uh, or, after class, or after work. And if you are in a different time zone, Europe or Asia or Africa, and I've noticed some of you, it might be late for you, but don't worry, please sign up anyway. We are going to send you a recording and you're going to be able to watch it for about seven days. We keep that recording online. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just want to wish you all the best in your preparation. Many of you mentioned that you would like to chat, so I will get back in touch with you and we'll set up some time to chat. I'm very friendly. I'm not going to bite. I, I want to ask you a lot of questions. Honestly, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one consultations, and I, I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm, I'm doing over a thousand consultations a year, and I've been doing this for over 12 years. So I've spoken personally with over 10,000 people. Many, many people who came through our programs took the GMAT course with us, the admissions counseling with us. And when we connect and talk about one-on-one, -on -one, we don't just talk about the GMAT. We'll talk about your goals. I'll give you some ideas of how to connect with the schools, how to build these relationships, how to connect with people in the school community. So you're going to understand this process a lot better. I, I, when I was applying to a business school, I wish that somebody, I can talk to somebody and actually say, well, you know, consider this or think about this or where are you taking your career and here's how you can make a decision. At that time, in early 2000s, there was very little information available, but now there's a lot more available. So I'm happy to share these things with you, happy to help you make the right, I can't make the decision for you. I don't even know how important is the MBA for you. All I can do is help you understand what is the right choice for you. You're gonna have to make a decision on how you can get there. That's my goal. And then you're gonna have to decide if this is important, you're gonna follow this process and you're gonna get there because getting into an MBA program is not a lottery. It's not like, you know, I, I just hope it's working out. It doesn't really work that way. If you're really committed, if you know what you want, not only you're going to get into the MBA program, but most importantly, you're gonna get your outcome. And that's why when we connect one-on-one, -on -one, We'll talk a lot about your outcomes. That's really my objective is, yeah, yeah, maybe you can get into a business school, but if that business school doesn't get you to where you need to be, then that might be a big disappointment. So we start by talking about your outcomes. What is it that you want to achieve in your career? And then we walk backwards to try to understand, okay, so what school is going to help you get there? What steps you need to take in school and before school? in order to get you to your goals. And imagine have, having these goals achieved, right? The MBA is by itself is an amazing experience. I have an MBA, I can tell you, for the best years of my life. But what comes after an MBA is even more rewarding. And that's what I'm happy to talk about. If you are the sort of a person who is really serious about doing this, I'm happy to connect. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, Stay in touch. I look forward to connecting with many of you one-on-one -on -one who mentioned that uh, you want to connect one-on-one -on -one. and with many of you in our workshops uh, tomorrow and in the near future. And uh, I know many of you who come here are already signed up for our classes. So we'll see you very shortly. If you haven't, you can go on admitmaster.com slash offer and explore everything that's available there. There are lots of free demos, lots of uh, different uh, information sessions, and uh, most importantly, lots of different study options as well. Take care, and I wish you all the best.